everyone, this is Kit Pang, the founder of Boston Speaks, and I am here with Mark Metri. Woo! Woo! And today we are talking about the art of storytelling. Mm. So if you don't know who Mark is, can you just tell them a little background about yourself? Yeah, so I'm uh, 21 years old. I grew up here in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I've always been a pretty crafty online kid, got on the internet when I was 11 years old, started a YouTube channel, started the world's number one Minecraft server, eventually ended up starting uh, the Humans 2.0 podcast, which is you know, on the top 100, I love saying that. <laughs> and I also run a marketing agency called View Dream. Wow, yeah. how does it feel to have a podcast on the top 100? Dude, it's literally ridiculous. I have to pinch myself every single morning when I wake up. Who were the, do you have any favorite people that you talk to? Yeah. Who, uh, my favorite person. Of course, they're all good, but you know. Yeah, they're all great. I mean, not all of them, but uh, <laughs> my number one is definitely Naveen Jain. He is, uh, I mentioned him a little bit when I was speaking. He is um, this philanthropist billionaire that not only came from India with absolutely nothing, like not even yeah. having a place to sleep or even food to eat, to going to college, coming to the United States, literally becoming a billionaire in two years, starting a space company. And then on top of all of that, he started a healthcare company that's main mission is to make chronic illness an option. So it's like when you talk about the best of the best people that have the abundance mindset of not just like putting in their money towards, you know, moving humanity forward by going to space, but also by helping people that are dealing with problems today with health. I think that's the most admirable thing you can possibly do. And um, yeah, Naveen Jain, episode 139. He's my favorite by far. Man, that's amazing. I'm going to have to check that out a little bit. You have bit. to. That's amazing. I can't wait to see what you're going to be doing in two years. <laughs> I'm ready, dude. So I'm today uh, we talked about, Mark was on the panel of the art of storytelling. What were some of your takeaways from the audience, from other panelists, or maybe you surprised yourself by what you were saying too? Do you remember anything? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think that you know, everyone hears this word storytelling, you know, we're all told that we should be doing it. But for me, it comes down to, you know, storytelling is the bedrock of our society. It's even more powerful than language, in my opinion. And basically what it does is it gives you the ability to connect with another human being, regardless of their uh, background, environment, whatever, um, you know, factors that they have in their own life to get a message, to, uh, you know, go past their uh, perceptual block, right? Because I think a lot of us as humans, like, you know, I'm sure some people on here, the second somebody says something, they tuned out. Whether they said it wasn't for them and they didn't understand it. And I think stories give us the ability for every single person to really understand and take part of the human experience. After you get that out of the way, it comes down to practicality. Like, yeah. how do you actually do this? You know, uh, Carvin said a great, it's about education, it's about making it entertaining and providing some kind of a valuable bit, right? Because there's no point in telling a story if the other person listening doesn't get anything out of it. And to me, that all comes down to figuring out your strengths, whether that you're really good on video, whether you're not good at video and you, like, you're maybe a little bit anxious and you just want to write, maybe you're a good writer, using whatever kind of communication method that's emerging today, like podcasts, for mm -hmm. example, and then just hitting that all the time. And the way that you do that will definitely evolve as you evolve as a human being as well. But you know, that is the end-all be-all, and it doesn't matter you know, whether the Facebook algorithm is hot today or it's LinkedIn or it's Snapchat. It's the same kind of process despite whatever you know, is going on today in our technology and how we use social media and communication. Yeah, so you're basically saying the mediums are different, but the way we communicate and relate with others, even through stories, or it's still always human to human, right? Absolutely. And there was something that you said earlier during the panel. It wasn't about storytelling, but it was about listening. Right? I think sometimes we talk a lot about storytelling, but there's also story listening. There's one thing that you said was when you first began um, doing podcasts, you didn't listen that much when you were interviewing people because I think there were a lot on your mind or maybe you were, you were thinking, what, what, what were you thinking? Yeah, so I literally remember my very first interview. It was, uh, it was done remotely. I was on my laptop, it was through a video chat. I remember I got like all dressed up to, like, just for the video chat. I, I, I had like this journal of like different questions that I was gonna ask them. And like it, like, it was just unbelievably nervous. Like I think I'm generally maybe a little bit more of like a, 
like a naturally anxious person. Yeah. And when I did that interview with um, like the CEO of this relatively decent sized company, it was like very intimidating for me. And what I ended up realizing, you know, over the course of my uh, progression is, you know, when I had these questions jotted down, I wasn't listening to them. And I was just like, oh, uh, like, and when they were talking, I was just um, trying to think about like, oh wait, how am I gonna respond to this? What am I gonna say? And I think, and I also did that with, um, you know, people that I was yep. just talking to yep. in real life, right? But then the moment everything changed is like, when I, you know, submit, when I, um, you know, stop, stop being so, you know, neurotic and just submit into the moment and just truly try to understand what the other person is saying, I found that you can just kind of like, like there's like this response that just sort of comes out that is like the most natural, that doesn't seem like it's staged. And, you know, that's how I think I get some of my best um, stuff is just by consciously listening. And after you do that, like, you know, your, your mind takes over to maybe just like not even ask another question, but just have like a normal conversation. Yeah. And when you do that, people can tell that are listening. So you're basically saying submit and don't think of too much. Of course, as human beings, we might always be oh, thinking. Always. But what you found out was that maybe when you were thinking less, you kind of just the natural response, no matter what came out, it just came out and it worked for you, right? Yeah, and I th it's like this, right? Like it's, um, you ever see that movie Limitless? Uh, yes, that was a good one. Yeah, where the guy yeah. takes like these drugs and his yes. mind is using, well yes. like what they've actually found, like this is actually the science. You know, you're not just using like 10% of your brain or anything. They've actually found that you get into higher performance when you, when you use less of your brain. So they've done uh, fMRI scans on people that are like freestyle rappers, stand-up comedians, and they found that actually when they're in the zone, a lot of parts that are lit up normally go dim and those parts of the brain shut down and that's how you get into like these majestic, it's called flow, it's called the state of flow. You get into like these majestic moments where it's like after you're like, wait, 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 what did I even say? But then everyone's like, you know, applauding mm. and saying how you did this. So mm. that's what I think a big part of it is. Wow, so yeah. using less of your brain in a way. Dude, that's the key. All hot performers do it. And you, you had that first, well, first of 2019. <laughs> use less of your brain in 2019 to get into a flow in a way. And that makes a lot of sense. Sometimes we overthink, I think. Almost always, man. And like, you know, you and I are just sitting here. Like, I'm literally, you know, I'm not trying to think about every, anything at all. And, and like, yeah. you know, to tell somebody to not think, I think is actually counterintuitive. Because once you say they're like, <laughs> oh, crap, oh, crap, I'm, like, I'm thinking again. So like the ways that I've found to, um, you know, not think so much is by, you know, doing different things like, uh, exercising, meditating, writing down my thoughts. Like, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys know Tim Ferriss. He has this thing where like if you journal in the morning, you trap the monkey mind on paper. So all of like those fears and like those things that are always going on in the background, sometimes, not always, you can stick them there. And in other words, you get yourself out of the way mm -hmm. in the morning or whenever you do like these healthy habits. And that allows you to be yourself for the rest of the day. And that's what I found. Cool, man. Cool. So one more thing for the audience. What's a good tip, because you've done so many interviews that you learn from doing these interviews that you can give the audience? Is there anything, like some good tip bids that... Um yeah, so for me, the biggest um, takeaway for doing interviews is, you know, not just doing your research on the person, because I think that's unbelievably important, but I think it's about understanding their life in a chronological manner and understanding their own sort of story, right? And seeing like, okay, for example, you know, at Naveen Jain, at five years old, he was uh, in India. At eight years old, he started to think this. At 12 years old, you know, his mm -hmm. family did this. At 18, he went off to college. So it's understanding their life from like a chronological order, because at least for me, mm. that helps me just understand them more as a human being. And once you do that, and you have a podcast interview, you know, it's like you are, you know, talking to, um, you know, a friend that's, you know, you're not just having a conversation, but you connect with them on a human to human level. And when you do that, when you've done your research, when you understand their life, you don't get as many fears. Like you're like, oh, what if I say this? Yeah. What if I do that? And that opens the door for present communication, which in my experience, mm -hmm. like the audience can tell and they're like, that's what separates a good interview versus like a crappy robotic interview. Like if you watch the news, for example, like the mainstream moves, 
almost all of them ask the same exact uh -huh. questions. And like, there's been like so many different parodies that's made around it, but it's like, you understand that person in their life. And um, just like another quick tip that I can say is, um, before all of my interviews, I ask my guests, what would make this the most powerful interview that you've ever done in your entire life? Mm. And when you ask them that question, you're not looking for a specific answer, but you're setting the intention. You're setting the mindset of like, okay, what are we actually gonna be doing here for the next 40 minutes? Because there are people gonna be listening slash watching. You know what I'm gonna ask next, right? What's the most powerful thing that can make this interview different from all your other interviews, even though you're on the other side? Now you are being interviewed. Yeah, so, you know, I think the most important thing that, uh, you know, I could possibly convey is that, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, you, you know you're, you're stupid, you think you're stupid, you're fat, you think you're fat, all these different insecurities because that's actually your strength. That's actually mm -hmm. the thing that the world needs you to move forward. So, like, when, I'm, when I was up here and I was telling my story, there were like a bunch of uh, like adults in here that were like, oh, I'm socially anxious too. But it's like once you allow your gift to not be something you're trying to hide, to not be uh, pushed down by you know, the darkness of your mind and you bring it up, that's where all of your power is. And the people that are unbelievably successful in the world are the ones that have realized that and are using it as their strengths. So, that's like the biggest thing. That's why I like go to schools all the time because I want kids and I want everyone in general to understand that like it literally does not matter uh, what you think of yourself, what kind of problems you think you have. Like, you know, I, I've realized that everyone in their life, they have like this one thing that like they're trying to hide, they're trying to avoid, they're trying to minimize, they're trying to do that. But it's like f for 99% of the case, that's actually your strength because that's what the world needs all eight billion of us man that was good thank you that was good that was a good one <laughs> so if people want to find out more about you or um, follow you yeah where, so where um, yeah so uh, i'm very active on linkedin and uh and instagram not really too much facebook just search my name mark metry m-a-r-k-m-e-t-r-y and if you like listen to podcasts listen to the human 2.0 podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts guys check them out and we're out